Hey there, everyone. How are you doing today? Welcome to another episode of Renegades React. And today, we're going to be watching some science videos. And I'm okay with this. <laughs> so I'm okay with this. Uh, over here on my on my left, your right, uh, is sitting the uh, rogue, uh, the mercenary chemist, the rogue, uh, the rogue mercenary chemist. Yeah. Who? Well, uh, Merc Merc chemist sounds sounds better, uh, but. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Tolliver over here. He uh, <laughs> not not that kind of doctor. Not, no, not that kind of doctor. No, uh, I'm, no I'm. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. I, I do, close your mouth. I'm not that kind of doctor. Look, I'm not. I am not going to lance that boil for you. No, no, no. no. We, no. His gag reflex is not that yeah, strong. No, no. <laughs> also, not that kind of doctor. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, people have been asking us to uh, to react to some stuff. Uh, case in point, uh, we saw this. I saw this a while back, and uh, I, I'd watched some of his stuff earlier on. Uh, Destin of Smarter Every Day. Uh, Destin is a, is a scientist based out of Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Uh, science in Alabama. You're lucky if they don't burn you at the stake. <laughs> Shut up. Good Shut word. up. Yeah, get out of here with your ignorance. I mean, honestly, if you've never been to the South and you don't know what it's actually like down here, I mean, honestly, not everyone's a gun-toting racist jer jerk-off who tries to shoot you whenever you try and mention Democrats. I hate to say that, guys. I, I or I hate to break that visage of uh, that visage that you have. Like everyone in the South is a racist. I mean, heck, we're in the South. Yeah. I mean, are you racist? No. Am I a racist? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm not. Yeah. But guys. Uh, everybody thinks everybody thinks yeah everyone in the south is stupid. Destin's a rocket scientist for God's sake. I mean to be fair, one of NASA's main headquarters is in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, and actually that's where he works. Yeah, I that's what I expected when you said rocket scientist in Alabama. I'm like he must work for NASA. <laughs> there you go. So in Destin's spare time, when he is not you know pushing the boundaries of what is possible with rocket science and you know space exploration. Yep. He does this little YouTube channel where he explains small little scientific, uh, uh, small little scientific mysteries that people wonder. Uh, like for instance, I see one here: the Archer's paradox. You know, the curve of the the curve of the arrow, like whenever it leaves, oh, whenever okay. it leaves the bow and everything. You know, uh, how, why is there the Archer's paradox? And also uh, the honey coiling. Uh, you know, why does honey always coil in one direction whenever you uh, whenever you are dripping it down? Hmm. And it's All it's right. interesting stuff. But the one we're going to be watching today is the Prince, the mystery of the Prince Rupert's drop, and uh, he's going to be filming this at very high speed, one hundred and thirty thousand frames per second. That's that's ridiculous. Yes, yeah. I was going to say twenty four thousand. That is ten. That is a a thousand times slower than the, than the human eye can respond. Than the human mm -hmm. eye can perceive. So, yep. It, it uh, craziness. But anyway, we've got this video queued up here. Yeah, you say I've, I've never heard of the Prince Rupert's Drop. I'm interested to see what this is. So let's give it so a watch. let's do it. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Today we're going to do awesome science with Orbix Hot Glass here at Lookout Mountain, Alabama. Goggle up. Oh. Science is about to happen. We're going to use Lookout a high-speed camera and learn about Prince Rupert's Drop. It's never been done on the internet. You're going to learn something. Let's go. A good opening scene. Okay, we are here inside the shop with Cal. Cal owns the place. Can you show me how to make a Prince Rupert's drop? Here we gather some glass, drop it in a bucket of cold water. Cold water. And here we go. So after it cools down, this is what you're left with. It kind of looks like a tadpole but it has some really interesting mechanical properties. We can actually hit this thing with a hammer and it won't break. Okay, I'm ready. Didn't go. Okay, I think Cal is kind of a pansy. So, I, you think you can break it? <laughs> so we're gonna try again, only this time I'm gonna make him hit it really hard and I'm gonna record it with high speed. Does that work? You think you can break it? All right, let's do it. The challenge is on. All right. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> So, do you think you actually broke it? I don't think you did. You think you broke it? I know I broke it. <laughs> Let's look at the high speed. Okay, so the drop broke, but technically it wasn't the hammer that broke it. If you look close in the high speed, you can see that it's the wiggling of the tail that makes it go. Yeah. This is the mystery of the Prince Rupert's drop. 
You yep. can try as hard as you can to break the bowl, but you can't. But if you even nick the tail, the entire thing will explode. Not shatter, but actually explode. explode. Let's go outside and I'll show you more. Okay, we're gonna just run an obscene frame rate here. We have this Phantom V1610. Mm -hmm. So glass breaking occurs so fast that you have to have like hundreds of thousands of frames per second. So we're gonna have a lower resolution and we have to have a lot of light as well. We're also gonna yeah. use this mirror over here to run about 3,000 frames per second so we can get a wide shot to see the whole event as well. Three. Good. Face mask. Now we understand what a Prince Rupert drop does, but at this point we don't quite understand why it does it. Let's take a closer look. Okay, this is called a polariscope, and basically what it is is it's a filtered piece of glass that's polarized. Now I have another wow. filter here. You can see if I turn it, yep. then I can block out the light. Now if yeah. I put this on the camera that you're looking through here, and then I put the Prince Rupert drop in between the two pieces of glass, you should be able to see the internal stresses built up inside yep. the Prince Rupert drop. There it so is. to understand how these stresses got here, let's use the color gray to represent nice and strong solid glass. We'll use red to represent molten glass, and because of the thermal expansion coefficient, it's safe to assume that the higher the temperature, the larger this glass wants to be. Blue yes. represents glass that's cooling off, or transitioning between the two states. Because of that same thermal expansion coefficient, this glass is shrinking and basically pulling in on itself. Think of mm -hmm. a Prince Rupert's drop as a bunch of little infinitesimal pieces of glass with each piece trying to interact with the pieces around it. When the molten glass is first stripped into the water, the outside layer touches the water and immediately solidifies. Yep. This locks in that outside shape of the drop. The inside of the drop, however, is still a hot expanded liquid. As heat's transferred to the water, that glass on the inside slowly begins to cool down and pulls in against that outside layer. The problem is that because it's already locked in as a round solid, it only compresses tighter against itself. This actually yep. makes it stronger, kind of like how an arch compresses and gets stronger when you put your weight on it, only this is in all directions. Now because the cooling glass can't move that outside layer, it begins to pull against itself, causing it to be in extremely high tension. It That's then hardens exactly in this state of tension, and there you have it, a Prince Rupert's drop. Internal the tension outside is an extremely high compressive yeah. stress, and the inside is an extremely high tensile stress. If one link in this tension chain is ever cut, it breaks on down the line, feeding off of its own stored up energy just like a chemical explosive does. The difference here is that instead of releasing chemical potential energy, mechanical strain energy is released. This wave of energy is what we call a failure front. You can directly measure the velocity of that failure front as long as you have a camera fast enough. Let's give it a shot at 130,000 frames per second. Three, two, one, go. Got it? Blister. Yep. Yep. And by the intervals, you can project the speed. Exactly. Wow. Jeez. So, big thanks to Cal from Orbix Hot Glass. If you found this interesting and you want to support him mm -hmm. by buying stuff, go click on the link wherever I put it and uh, go check out his website. Click the cat to subscribe with the helmet. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a we sad looking cat. Yeah. You've never yeah, caught cat a cat on fire, off. ever. ever. <laughs> well, not even once. Never. I mean, these things are named for a guy named Prince Rupert, imagine that, who lived in Bavaria back in the 1600s. Here. Here. Goggle up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they brought these over as a Dead. gift to King Charles II in England, who gave them to his royal society to try to figure out. Yep, ready. Whoa, holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me. You know what blow blowed up? It, it blowed up. It blowed up, y'all. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So I was like, okay, ah, we can we can cheat. Psalms 111 too. Huh. Oh. 
All it, right. it, it's interesting when when they started showing it actually breaking like that. I went like internally. I'm like, there's got to be some sort of internal stress in the crystalline structure. Yeah, high tension, like very yeah. high tension. Yeah. Just and and he explained it. He explained it. You know, through you know, it you know, it was already solidified on the exterior, but it kept tugging in and tugging in. It's and, it's a principle of heat transfer. Yeah. Which was probably my least favorite class in the chemical engineering department. Ah. Uh, there's quite a lot of, um, oh, what is it? There's a lot of differential equations involved. Um, but it's, uh, it's interesting stuff. But I just sort of, I just sort of looked at it, I'm like, hmm, that's, uh, I, uh, I I can't believe that, like just looking at, it, I'm like, that looks like a crystal. It's like the, it's got to be something with the crystal structure. There it is. And there, there it right is in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, huh. I was going to say, the Prince Rupert's drop, uh, its failure front is based upon the tail because where the tail is so skinny, you nick it and it's done. Yeah, because the it's much lower, uh, it's a much lower thickness there, yeah. which means there's much less strength with it. So. You can catch it, and then it has an it has a point in which to release all that energy. Yeah. So it just shatters right down the line. Well, I'm wondering. I've seen experiments done in zero gravity with with like spheres of water, with like spheres of water and everything. Right. Yeah. I wonder, could you do a Prince Rupert's drop in zero gravity that would be a perfect sphere and would never break because because of its te- because the tension was was equally distributed amongst the mm. ore. I mean, honestly, could could that happen? That would be quite a trick to pull off. No, I know, and and huh. Well, actually, part of the problem is that the entire thing is created by gravity. You are dropping glass into the water. Yeah. If there is no gravity, how do you get the glass into the water? Well, I was going to say you uh, encompass the glass. You encompass the glass. You get the glass uh, in its molten form in in a sphere. You get its molten, you get its molten form in a sphere, and then from there, and then from there, you you bring in the water around it, and you encompass it, and you encompass it perfect, you encompass it perfectly, because that's the only way. Because they say that's the only way to get something truly perfectly spherical, and it is to do it in space. Uh, you, well, technically, the only way to get something perfectly spherical is to use do, is to do it in free fall. Okay. So, for example, uh, a bit of history. During, ar- around the time of the Civil War, a way to mass produce musket balls was to build a rather tall tower okay. with a pool of water at the bottom. Oh, yes. And yes. what they would do is they would drip molten lead down. Now, as the molten lead went through freefall, it formed a sphere. When it hit the water at the bottom, it solidified in its spherical state. Okay. And that's how they made musket balls on mass. Well, I, well, I'd heard, I'd heard that, you know, in order for something to be truly perfectly spherical, that it had to be either done in zero gravity. But free fall, I've also heard that as well. Well, okay, so zero gravity, a, as you're calling it, is actually free fall. Okay. So there is no point at which you technically escape gravity. Ah, I see um, what you mean. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. So what you mean there, now. there really is no such thing as zero gravity. However, when you are in orbit around the Earth, you are in constant free fall. That is why you can have the, uh, for lack of a better name, the vomit comet, ah. which is used to simulate weightlessness because the plane goes into free fall. That's why you feel lighter as you go down in an elevator. Yeah, it's because you're, not, you're fighting. You're not against, quite to free fall. You're you're fighting. But you against are the moving pull. towards free fall. You're you are uh, fighting against the gravitational pull. Well, you're getting assistance uh, against the gravitational pull. You're getting assistance to make yourself to make to uh, rel- to where gravity is not affecting you as much by going down. Like it depends on the speed at which you fall. Right. As well. it, it's like the same weightless effect that you get whenever you go over like uh, you know like a like you know those hills on the road. I know. I know the yeah. exact one you're talking about. Yes. And, and yeah, that's that's what it is. And you it, are, it almost makes your stomach drop. You are very, very briefly entering free fall. Yes, 
Yeah. And and you see stuff like that to me is is breathtaking because yeah. I remember I remember they they fixed it uh, like later down the later on when I was older. But when I was a kid, uh, whenever me and my dad had to drive to Kingsport, uh, there was this little hump. There was a little hump that did that. Yeah, that caused that. Okay. And yeah. Every time, and we knew where it was, and every time we came near it, me and Dad were like, "All right, here we go." And yep. Then, and you'd, you'd speed up just a little bit and get that that yeah. brief little skip of of free fall. Yeah. yeah. And they fixed it later on, and it was just like, "Oh." Yeah. There's there's a couple of places not too far from here where it, they haven't fixed it. It's uh. it's nice. <laughs> I I kind of like it. Yeah. I. That's that's the closest I'll ever get to going on a roller coaster. Okay, but all right. uh, well, me, I'm a roller coaster freak. I can't of course, help it. but <laughs> but yeah, there you go. All right, so guys, that was unbelievable. That's I mean, cool. honestly, the Prince Rupert's drop—that's really cool. I mean, I, I'd heard about it earlier. Uh, like I like I told Ben, I think they just, I think I saw it on MythBusters like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they did nowhere near to that size of scale. It was like little like little itty bitty pea sized droplets that they put in like plastic bags and cracked them. Oh, yeah, okay. And, and you see... Yeah, admittedly, I would have liked to have seen more protective gear. The guy who had on the uh, the full welding mask... Yeah. That was pretty appropriate because, uh, as I think somebody pointed out in the comments on this video, yeah, breathing in a tiny little particulate glass like that can be incredibly bad for your lungs Yeah, as it happens. Uh, silicosis is the term. Um. It's not quite to the uh, to the same effect of uh, asbestos, but it's a similar effect. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, what's this right here? Set speed at point oh five and click two forty five. Yeah. Be so, amazed. huh? Hmm. I wonder about All that. All right. Let's see, I'll I'll try that real quick. Okay. All right. Speed. Speed half. All right. And then two forty five. I believe it was. Yeah, that'll that'll do. Yeah, wait. Uh, it gives a little more detail. Yeah. I mean, you essentially have more time to process what you're actually seeing. Okay. It also tells you that it is effing fast. It really fast. Yeah. I mean, honestly, 1.03 miles per second, or is it meters per second? Miles per second is wow. what he Wow, okay. What so, he had. so that, that calculating is, that, that is over 60 miles per minute. That is 3, 000, roughly 3,600 miles an hour. Whew. Which, <laughs> let's see, that is five times uh, the speed of sound in air. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to call. I, I'll have to take this. But guys, check out the original video in the description below. Also, check out Destin. I mean, honestly, Smarter Every Day. The guy puts out awesome content. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, he, like and he knows the science behind it. That's, yes, he does. That's important. So if you uh, like what you've seen here, uh, let us know. Uh, leave a like on the video. Also, uh, go down in the comments below if there's something else you want us to watch. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh <laughs> I better take this before us uh, before I get killed. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll see you later, guys.